Hi there, I'm Dr. Nate Story from Bright Agritech, and this is Aquaponics Academy episode number four. Today we're going to discuss the three main types of aquaponic systems. So to start off, I'm just going to talk about the types of aquaponic systems out there and uh, why people choose them. And to be very fair, there are a lot of different types uh, beyond the three types I'm going to mention, but these are the three main kinds that people implement, namely media-based systems, so this is our classic IBC systems or media bed systems, um, DWC or RAF systems, and vertical systems. So these are the three kind of main categories that people are implementing today. Welcome to Aquaponics Academy, a bright agrotech podcast designed to help you overcome common aquaponic issues, learn new growing techniques, and help you be as successful as you can be as an aquaponic practitioner. Join aquaponics expert, Dr. Nate Story, the creator of Zip Grow Towers, as he breaks down complex topics into easy to understand information. And now, here's Dr. Nate Story. Let's just start off with media-based systems. So almost everyone is familiar with our traditional media-based systems. We're talking about IBC-based systems. We're talking about all of our media bed systems. And uh, we're really talking about the roots and the oldest traditions in aquaponics. So way back when, people were taking gravel beds, and they were filtering all of their water through these gravel beds. And uh, then, you know, kind of the bright idea came along, let's... Let's uh, take these biofilters and let's plant some plants in them. And all of a sudden, they went from just an aquaculture system with this gravel bed biofilter to a media-based aquaponic system. And this is really where a lot of aquaponics got started. And even today, a lot of people really like to implement media-based systems because they're simple, they're inexpensive, and they can be really, really productive, especially with some of those nutrient hogs like tomatoes and cucumbers and eggplant. So... Um, this is really important for hobbyists to know because um, media-based systems are probably the most implemented hobby system in the world. But trying to scale those into commercial systems can be really, really difficult. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, it's not always possible to scale media-based systems into large commercial operations because the labor costs can be really, really high. So... Um, Media-based systems are kind of the first system out there. They're great for starting. They're very inexpensive to put together, and they work really, really well. So um, we love media-based systems. And actually, it's one of the reasons why we designed a vertical media-based system uh, with, with our zip-grow towers. So the second um, most common method out there is RAF systems. And RAF systems are really, really common, especially when it comes to commercial growing. So... Uh, RAFs have been around for a long time. A lot of people have used RAF-based production. But the guy who really, really made RAFs um, popular was Dr. Ricosi at University of Virgin Islands. So back, um, I think in the 80s is really when he started publishing a lot of research. Um, up through the 90s, he was really, really prolific. And there's tons of studies out there on his RAF system. And actually, almost all of the modern commercial RAF systems have their roots in the system that he originally designed and implemented. And um, actually, in a lot of my research, I found that even the modern designs have not necessarily improved on Dr. Ricosi's designs. So um, he is really kind of the father of modern commercial aquaponics production here in the States. Very, very awesome guy. Um, there are also a lot of, uh, of Australians who have been, um, who have been uh, experimenting with RAF production. And Dr. Leonard of uh, Australia, he's kind of one of the world experts at the moment on RAF production. And, uh, you know, doing amazing work and research and helping a lot of people design really top-notch RAF systems. So um, RAF systems are popular in commercial systems because uh, they are really inexpensive to implement. So they're really inexpensive to implement, and um, they lend themselves well to producing a lot of, a lot of plants um, in a very similar condition. So um, a lot of people have picked RAF systems uh, for their commercial systems. Now I'll talk a little bit about this later and kind of the folly in picking RAF systems for any environment, any crop. But uh, that's the next question. I'll leave it till then. Next on the list are vertical systems. So this is kind of a recent development, and you know that uh, we here at Bright Agritech uh, do a lot of vertical production ourselves. Actually, we're entirely vertical production, and almost all of our upstart farmers are vertical producers as well. And uh, we use towers because they're much more efficient uh, at space 
use in our greenhouses, in our growing environments, and they let us do live sales. So um, we use Zipgrow Towers. There are a few other different tower systems out there, but of course we, we've design we prefer the design that we have uh, developed and uh, that, all, of course, all of our farmers use. And uh, tower, tower production systems are very nice. They're very spatially efficient, and uh, they're easy to access, easy to harvest, and we just generally really, really love them, um, primarily because a function of all of uh, the space use efficiency of, of all of the logistic and care uh, efficiencies that you get with towers means that your labor cost is a lot lower. And uh, for commercial producers like us, uh, labor costs make you or break you. So we're really interested always in reducing our labor costs. And the best, fastest, easiest way for us to do that and get a lot of really great production is with towers. So the next um, question is, you know, what are the various systems uh, for and how are they best used? You know, where are they best used? And this is a really great question because a lot of people don't ask it. And if you don't ask this question, then you have a really hard time picking the right system for your particular situation. So um, media-based systems, as I mentioned before, are really, really great for hobby systems. They have um, great biofiltration. They're really inexpensive to implement. And uh, they grow crops generally pretty well. Um, of course, you're picking your crops based on, on your system. So you know, media-based systems don't always do great with root crops, but with something like expanded shale or hydrogen as your media, you can still grow things like root crops. And it really supports a lot of plant growth on a hobby level. So you can grow things like tomatoes, plants that really like a lot of nutrients because you're leaving all those solids in the system. They're getting captured in your media beds and they're decomposing and all of those nutrients become available to your plants. Well, um, you know, in a raft system, something like this, you're filtering out a lot of that, of uh, a lot of those solids. You're filtering out a lot of that material. And um, what it means is that your system doesn't typically run as rich as it could if you were just using, um, if you were using, uh, a media bed or something and leaving all of that, all of the solids in the system. So um, this is something to think about with media bed versus raft. And it's one of the reasons why in raft systems, you see growing people growing a lot of things like lettuce and herbs, and you don't see them growing large statured stuff. Uh, you know, another reason for that is just the root zones of those large statured plants. You know, when they're just kind of floating down there in the water, it's harder to support those plants. It's harder to kind of uh, keep them growing in a good upright manner and, uh, you know, keep them healthy. So these are all things to think about. Um, media, again, is great stuff, and it works really well on a hobby level. But if you're thinking about expanding it, um, media, is, media bed, the labor costs and the logistic costs of managing those uh, beds can become really difficult um, in a greenhouse or something like that. You've got to hire a lot of people. There's a lot of maintenance involved. And it's kind of one reason why larger producers have shied away from media beds as a commercial production technique. Now, raft production, it's really common, and um, I, always, I always say it's unfortunate. Um, I, I don't like to really rag on raft production, but, you know, raft production was developed in the tropics, and it has a higher labor cost per unit of production than a lot of other techniques out there. And um, one of the reasons it works really well in tropical or very southern regions is because labor costs are lower, and it's useful for maintaining root zone temperatures. So way back in the day, people were using raft production and hydroponics because the thermal mass of the water uh, kind of mediated the temperature swings from night to day, from day to night in tropical areas. So you prevented the, the root zone of the plants, and the plants are very sensitive to te uh, temperature swings in the root zone. You prevented those roots from heating up and then cooling down, and then heating up and then cooling down um, with this large thermal mass of water. So it's one of the reasons it became very popular. However, when you're trying to move these rafts around, you're spreading plants out, you're, you do have a higher labor cost per unit of production. And like I always say, your labor costs make you and break you as a commercial producer. So um, unless you're in the southern U.S. or in the tropics, um, I would tend to, sh uh, I would encourage you to shy away from rafts just because um, you can't afford really to do the, you can't afford for the most part the labor costs of producing with RAF systems. Now, um, 
yeah, every case is different and uh, you should be running your own financials. But if you really understand your cross structure, uh, you, can, you can of course go in and look at raft production, compare it to other techniques and pick the technique that is best for you. Um, but you know, we, we don't grow with raft systems and really none of our growers, uh, you know, do. There's probably, oh, 30 different farms now using our towers and, uh, we're glad they're using towers and not trying to do it with rafts because rafts are a much harder life, uh, for you as a producer. So the third one, uh, towers, uh, towers work best in no more Northern climates. Okay. So, um, you know, in the same way that rafts are very well suited to the tropics, towers are better suited to northern climates. They're better suited to areas where space use is really, really important because you're, you're paying um, per square foot of growing space, either, whether in a greenhouse or, or even outdoors for that matter. So you want to really maximize your space use efficiency. And we use tower systems to do that. So they're a great tool for getting more production out of our space. Um, they're also a really great tool for selling into uh, markets. So we have a lot of growers that sell to Whole Foods and to other grocery stores. And um, by selling the towers live, they're really able to uh, minimize the amount of labor that it takes to harvest and process and package and market all of the produce that uh, they would be if they were using some other system. So this is one consideration for vertical systems as well. Now, I will say they are uniquely, situ uh, they are uniquely kind of... Um, they favor small statured crops. I'll put it that way. So tower systems like raft systems favor smaller statured crops. We're talking things like lettuces, basil, mint, oregano, thyme, rosemary, these crops that um, typically have smaller growth habits, strawberries. Uh, the larger statured stuff, you're almost always stuck with growing in a media bed. So, you know, whether or not, um, you know, whether or not you're in a northern climate or a southern climate or wherever, if you want to grow tomatoes, they're going to grow best in a media bed. That's all there is to it. Um, now, you can grow them in towers, and we've had a lot of customers who do, but they get so huge that they really become kind of unmanageable. Um, so these are all things to think about when you're, when you're thinking about a technique. You want to match the technique to your crop, but you also want to match it to your, to your markets and to your climate. So think about it really carefully. Uh, some other considerations to think about when you're choosing a system are space. So how much space do you have? Do you need to maximize that space or is space really cheap? Can you use a lot of space to produce the same amount of product? Um, climate, you know, you know, I don't want to use a raft system in northern climates. Similarly, uh, you know, towers or, um, you know, an aeroponic technique of some sort uh, probably wouldn't do well as well in the tropics as, say, a raft system where labor is very inexpensive and the temperature swings can be extreme. Now, I will say, you know, there's a lot of people using towers in the tropics and they really like them. Um, but, you know, I, the, the idea there is we just want to think carefully about our climate and make sure that we're picking the right technique for our markets, for our climates. Think about the cost. Okay, so the front end cost is important to think about, but think about your operating costs too. You know, do you want a system that costs you more next year than it did this year? Or do you want a system that costs very little on the front end but costs a lot in operational costs? Or do you want a system that costs a lot on the front end and very little in operational costs? So these are things to think about, um, things you must consider when you're, when you're thinking about setting your system up. Of course, you've got to match the system to the crops. Um, you've got to think about how you're going to scale. You know, what's the easiest way to scale? Is this technique scalable? This is a big question with media beds, you know. Media beds are just really tough to scale. It's hard to scale production with media beds. I mean, you can, oh, sure, you can always tack one on, you can always tack one on, but um, the reality is of, of implementing is that it just doesn't work very well on a very large scale. So these are things to think about as well. Return on investment. Um, how are you going to make the most money on this technique? Uh, you know, this is a big question, of course, for raft producers. Rafts are less expensive to implement on the front end, but the labor costs are higher. So a lot of guys see much slower or poorer ROI on raft systems than, than, than others. What's the ease of use? Think about the people that will be using it, the layout of your greenhouse or your growing space. How will you move through this, uh, through this space, through this growing space? How will you access your plants? How will you deal with pests and monitor things? How will you basically take care of your crops? 
And, um, you know, if you've got to wind your way through these techniques, um, or if these techniques take up so much room that it's very difficult uh, to get to this area or that area, then that adds cost because you have, you're, you, you have to pay someone to move through there to access things. And if that costs, if that takes more time, it costs you more money. So it's something to be thinking about. And of course, the intended use. So, um, you know, things like if you want this as a green wall, an aquaponic green wall, then of course you need to use towers as opposed to raft systems. Um, you know, if the intended use is, is educational, instead of commercial, then maybe something like media beds makes a lot of sense um, because media beds are, are a lot easier to implement and they make more sense to people who are not, a, who are not familiar with, with hydroponics or a raft system, something like that. So think about it. Is it educational? Is it just for home use? Is it a commercial system? If so, what crops are you growing? Who are you trying to sell them to? How will you use the system? All of these things are really important considerations, and I could probably talk about them for hours and hours and hours, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm limited here. Chris is going to get mad if I, if I uh, take more time on these podcasts than necessary. So um, with that being said, I'll leave, it, um, I'll leave it here, and of course, we've got a lot more information on our blog, and uh, there, we've got lots of other resources out there on different systems and how to, how to choose between them. But... Um, that's it for today. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Aquaponics Academy. We hope you're finding these first few podcasts really helpful to understand what aquaponics is all about. And uh, we're going to continue to, to talk about this. We're going to get into more detailed information in future episodes. And so beha on behalf of everyone here at Bright Agritech, we hope you'll stay connected with us. Subscribe to our podcast uh, for more information on aquaponics tips and techniques. And thanks so much for listening.